so I'm on my way to Hawaii with plans to hike one of the most dangerous trails in the world. Sorry, Mom. You see, I've wanted to hike the Kalalau for years, but you need to obtain a permit to hike it. Let me tell you, it was not easy to get my hands on this. Let's let the uh, 35 kilometer journey begin. I felt so many different emotions when I stepped onto the Kalalau. There is this great sense of anticipation. You know what lies ahead of you, this long and mysterious hike that takes you to this magical beach that very few people will ever get to see. At the same time though, you recognize that you are hiking one of the most dangerous paths in the world. The steep cliffs and unpredictable weather of Kauai on top of the remoteness of this hike and the unmaintained trails make for a very daunting experience. So we're two miles into the hike right now. We just went over our first stream crossing, which is the first element that can actually stop you from doing this hike. That stream can flash flood and make it impassable. So thankfully we were able to pass it. We have nine more miles to go. Because we're tracking the coastline of Kauai, the coastline of Kauai happens to be fairly mountainous and jagged. Whew. Sorry, tiring. Because it happens to be mountainous and jagged, that is exactly what we have to do. Climb the mountains, climb the jags. I've got sunscreen in my eyes. Yeah. The beginning of this trail is unlike anything I had ever hiked before. As you hike up and down the jagged edges of the Kauai coastline, hearing the ocean crash below you, you really feel like you're in a special place. So the trail has slowly been getting more precarious as we've continued on. And these kind of sections are pretty common now. You have a tiny thin little goat track that follows up here and then a sheer drop off to the ocean. And we are not even at the sketchiest parts of the hike yet. So I'm feeling a bit frightened. The feet are holding up well. Just need to tape some of the hot spots so they don't form into legitimate blisters. Up until this point, things had been going really well. However, as I came upon the halfway point of the trail, it started to rain. A lot of the technical parts of the trail are terrifying in and of themselves. Then you throw a bit of water on them and make them slippery and they become treacherous. I was faced with a big decision. Do I sit here at the halfway point, potentially never seeing the end of the trail, or do I push on and risk getting stuck in the rain? So after taking a quick break at the six mile campsite, I have decided to push on. The rain has let up, at least for the time being. And uh, I feel, you know what, we have to give this a shot. We have brought out the trusty hiking poles though, because the trail is slick. I'm not gonna lie you guys, I am low key freaking out. This is commonly referred to as the most technical part of the trail. It's the sketchy little goat track that runs along the side of this cliff. And if you fall, you're certainly gonna die. Like there's no way out of that. There's no way. It's steep, it's slippery, and the track is not very wide. I don't know, I really debated doing this, but the weather's good right now. The trail has dried a bit from when it rained. And I think we just gotta send it. Here it goes, you guys. You can definitely not fall here. I'm going to be quiet and concentrate now. <clears throat> oh baby. Oh my gosh. Oh. Oh gosh. I was so freaked out about that part. And you know what? We made it through. We do have to come back at some point, but uh, we're good for now. Holy sh Oh gosh. Don't look down. Don't look down. Do not look down. Doing my best to not look down. Don't look down. Oh gosh. Holy sh**, holy sh**, oh, oh, holy, 
As my nerves began to calm, at least as much as they could, I was able to start appreciating the trail. I began to marvel at the crazy history that this trail has. The Nepali coast is extremely isolated, and because of that, the indigenous peoples who lived here had to be self-sufficient. That meant that this footpath, this trail that I was walking on, was a lifeline, connecting people and communities that resided up and down the valley. Cool. I was feeling more and more at ease as I continued along the trail. I felt like a lot of the tough things were behind me. That being said, I did have this dreading fear that if it began to rain again, I wouldn't be able to turn back, and I also wouldn't be able to progress forward. So it has just started raining on us again. It held up for the really technical parts, which is amazing. I'm really crossing my fingers there are not too many technical parts left because I really don't feel like doing them in the rain. There's no way I'm going back through some of those pieces we've already done with the rain flowing. You guys, I cannot make this up. I don't think it is possible for it to rain any harder than it is raining right now. And uh, I cannot turn around. We literally have to keep going. Holy crap. <clears throat> guys, I do not think it's possible for it to have rained any harder than it just did. I'm literally dripping. Like, from every, every inch of me is dripping. It feels disgusting. Thankfully, it's Hawaii, so it's really hot out, but that was gnarly. I'm soaked to the bone. Now the trail is saturated with water. This should be fun. I've got to say, as much as I want to have a good attitude about this, because, I mean, that's why you come out on the trail to uh, experience it, I'm so done with it. I'm ready to get to camp. We are nine miles in. We have two more miles to go, and uh, I'm ready to dry off and just sit on a beach. I am so stoked. That's the campsite just up ahead. We made it. Good morning, my dudes. Last night was amazing. After such a treacherous and demanding hike, getting to come here, camp on the beach, be surrounded by this beautiful valley right on the ocean, it was something else and it was so relaxing. Today, I have no plans, which means I get to sit here and do absolutely nothing all day. So this is what all of that hiking was for, Kalalau Beach. The beach is only accessible by hiking in through the Kalalau Trail. That means that it's never very busy and everyone there is in the exact same situation that you are in. The beach itself is surrounded by this surreal amphitheater of jagged cliffs and mountains with this magical fresh waterfall on the side of the site that you can use to shower and collect drinking water. So I'm out here back at the Kalalau River, which is about half a mile outside of camp. As I was sitting on the beach, someone said, hey, if your muscles are hurting and your feet are sore, before you hike out tomorrow, you should come sit in the river. My muscles and feet are both of those things. So I took them up on that offer to sit in the water, have a waterfall massage my back and just chill. My day exploring the Kalalau Valley was relaxing as ever. After hanging around on the beach, bathing in the river, and really not doing a whole lot else, I made some food, built a fire, and then got ready for bed because I had a very early morning tomorrow. You know, as much as it sucked to get out of bed at 5 a.m. and pack up camp, leaving early had to have been one of the coolest things I had done. I was the first one out of camp, which meant that I had the entire Kalalau Valley to myself. Oh. 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 It's okay. It's okay. This is a sketchy step. Oh. Whew. Whew. 
We made it. We have made it to the Hanakoa campsite, which is almost halfway. So we're making really, really good time. I have not had breakfast. I literally had a coffee and then jetted right out of there. So I'm gonna eat some breakfast, drink some water, fuel up, and then we'll continue on. The remainder of the hike was a breeze. I've gotta say, hiking the Kalalau is definitely not for the faint of heart. But if you can muster up the courage, you have to go do it. What an epic experience.